Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be replacing the factory doubled in and this Mercury Mountaineer. Now, in this video, we're going to show you how to remove this factory radio. We'll head over the bench, show you the new radio, including the dash kit and the wiring harness needed, and come back here to get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. As we jump into things, obviously this vehicle is the exact same platform as the Ford Explorer. What you can expect in your install today is basically the same whether you have the one trim or the other. Now based on the features on your vehicle, we do have steering wheel volume controls that we will want to retain and we also happen to have the upgraded audio sound system in this. Now, whether you have those features or not, we're going to cover all those different specs once we head over to the bench. Now, the first thing we need to do is get this guy on out. It's always a great idea to go ahead and double check to make sure all your discs have been removed. The first thing we need to do is remove this dash bezel that kind of sits up and around the radio. We're going to open up our center console here, and there's going to be two 932nd screws that will have to be removed. Also, a 7mm will also fit as well. So let's go ahead and remove those. Next thing here, there's going to be trim up and around your shifter. I have a little panel tool. We're going to go ahead and pop it on free here. Just like so. Okay, and I'm going to just give this guy a little tug. I'm going to pop this guy on out. Disconnect your harnesses. Okay, and then basically this whole bezel up and around the radio is going to have to come free. Now, you may find yourself at this point of time with not a lot of space because the gear shifter is in the way. If you put in the key, we can pull it on back and that's going to grant us a little bit more space. You can pull the dash bezel totally out of the way. Once that's moved, go ahead and disconnect your harnesses here. Now you do have your airbag light here at the top. While this harness is disconnected, we do strongly suggest you don't turn on the vehicle. Okay, next thing here, once the bezel has been removed, we have four more 932nd or seven millimeter screws that need to be removed. Go ahead and give the radio a tug. And then you're going to have to disconnect all the harnesses on the back of the radio. Okay, we are totally done with the factory radio. You can set that guy off to the side. What we need to do at this point of time is head over to the bench and show the parts that we're going to need for this install. All right, here at the bench, the parts that we're going to need for our install, first and foremost, is the radio that our customer has chosen for us to install here today. Has this Boss Audio Wireless Apple CarPlay unit. Also does wireless Android Auto. Now, to accommodate this radio in the factory location, we need some bits and pieces to make that work. First thing we need is the dash kit. Now, this Metra 99-5807 dash kit accommodates both single and doubled-in radios. It comes with a pocket, but if you're doing a doubled-in, you won't need the pocket in your install. Now, where the wiring comes into place for a wiring harness adapter, this is going to completely depend on the trim level of your Ford Explorer or Mercury Mountaineer. We happen to have the factory premium trim. We have the upgraded audio sound system. Um, so we need the Niner Shore Hunters adapter, which is the Pack RP4-FD11 to retain our steering wheel controls, our factory amp and sub, and any other factory features that run through the radio. However, if you don't have the upgraded sound system, you don't have steering wheel volume controls, there are cheaper harnesses on the market and we'll link those harnesses down in the description of the video based on the trim level of your vehicle. So that's our wiring harness adapter. We also need an antenna adapter and we're going with this 
Metra 40-CR10. And finally, we have the harnesses that are included with our radio. So at this point of time, what we're gonna do is grab the harness that came with the radio. We're gonna grab our RP4 FD11 pack harness here, which is in this bag, along with the smart harness module and our antenna adapter. We're gonna get everything pulled apart. Today, we're gonna be soldering our connections, generally color for color. If you don't know how to solder or don't have the means to do so, we suggest either using butt connectors or crimp caps. Uh, just don't twist and tape or use wire nuts as that's not designed for an automotive application. All right, so we went ahead and prepped our harnesses here. This is the harness that came with the radio. Here's our pack harness. We stripped both ends and we loaded one side up with some heat shrink. So after we solder, we can move it up and over and shrink them down with a little bit of heat. Uh, for the most part here, it's going to be color for color. So you can always verify that with the boss radio and the pack harness to ensure that that wire indeed is the color that should match with the uh, corresponding unit you're looking to install. Don't ever 100% assume it's always going to be color for color. Every once in a while, um, a color may change, you know, when it damage your head unit. So All right, so we went ahead and soldered all our connections there. In our case, it was 100% color for color, so we were lucky there. Now, what we also did is, because we prepared our heat shrink beforehand, we're gonna slide them up over here, and we'll use a heat gun to shrink the tubes. All right, so we shrunk all the tubes there. We actually left off an extra remote turn on wire here, as well as an accessory. This uh, harness does put out 10 amps on the accessory, which is super nice, so you can power for example, a backup camera or anything else down the road. Uh, so we left that out just in case uh, so we don't have to dig into the harness later. So with this all nice and cool, we'd like to also test the tape our harness just to give it a little bit more protection and also provides a professional look, even though it sits back behind the dash. Before we plug this into the vehicle, you need to set your radio switch here. This is going to be a Pioneer slash other, so it's dip switch number seven or rotary switch number seven. Refer to your pack instructions if you're going to use this adapter to locate the radio that you're going to be in and you set your rotary switch before you hook this up to power. So we've set that. We've set ours to 7, which is Pioneer and forward slash other. And now we are good to go to get this all buttoned up. Mount. Because the USB on our radio happens to be on the back, we had to be creative in order to easily access that USB without just throwing the cable in the glove box or hanging out the dash here. So what we did is we had some links here. We popped this guy on out, which happens to be a similar size. We have this square USB flush mount. We cut out and mounted a piece of ABS plastic in there, and it's nice and solid. We glued in the plastic and everything, and that's gonna make for an easy access point in order for us to use that wired Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or any USB input um, from the dash bezel. So kind of a cool thing. This is what it looks like here on the back. Got a little bit of glue in there. It's all nice and set up. And uh, this will essentially just plug into the back of our radio. Right, so Pretty we cool. finished our harness adapter. This end plugs into the vehicle, all three harnesses. We have our accessory RCAs. Now these RCAs, you may not use all of them. This is rear seat entertainment if you don't have that equipped. This is the audio from like the flip down DVD player, but if you don't even have one, this won't plug in. Um, then the next one we have here is our sub input. Then this is the aux input. If you have a factory aux, you go ahead and plug this into the aux input on the back of the radio. So those are our RCA cables there. Got everything zip tied and ready to go. This end plugs into the radio. Got our 3.5 millimeter WR uh, for steering wheel controls all connected. And we left our accessory and our remote turn on um, extra leads out just in case we need them down off down later. Now our dash kit here, it comes with both the single din kit and the double din kit. It's a big package. You only will use one versus the other. Uh, I guess you can keep that single din kit for something else. Um, but this is the double din and the brackets. Now it comes with this as well here. What we're going to do is cut out this center brace and we like to use a pair of flush cuts to make that happen. Just go ahead and just cut in there. And then what I'm gonna do is actually grab a little file and file these nubs down just so they're nice and smooth and you won't see them. All right, so we went ahead and finished mounting our radio. Now these little nubbies here go on the bottom, not the top. And this does say right and left, but mind you, the right is actually upside down. Don't let that screw you up. Slips up and over the side of our uh, little plate here. 
and it locks into place and you throw the screws in. So we are done here. That's all good to go with our radio done, our harness done, our USB flush mount done. We are ready to head back to the car to start, start getting everything installed. Okay, so at this point of time, let's go ahead and start getting everything in reinstalled. Let's grab our harness adapter and make those connections. Okay, all three harnesses plug right on in. Let's go ahead and kind of feed this back in there. Grab our radio and start making those connections as well. All right, so with all our connections made here at this point of time, let's go ahead and get that radio back in the dash. Uh, the radio is all mounted, looks great. Let's go ahead now and work on reassembling the dash here. Now my suggestion is hook up your airbag light here and do a little test. Make sure everything's working before you fully get this all put back together. I'm gonna do that real quick. Um, everything is in nice and bolted up looks like everything is functioning properly we checked our HVAC controls down here all the buttons are working and it seems like we're all good to go for this job today now we did a backup camera on this radio if you want to see how we did that backup camera we'll link that video down in the description which walks you through step by step on how to install a camera to your aftermarket radio. If you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. If you want any of these parts that we used in this video, we'll link them down in the description. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw, and don't forget to subscribe to post great content on the channel all the time. And we'll see you in the next video.